We're back. Now we're going to talk about production assignment three, which is all about how to import audio and use the clips list, and also how to bounce your session down to an audio file. All right, let's get started. All right, step number one, as before, we're going to create a Pro Tools session. So I'm just going to open Pro Tools. All right, here we are at the dashboard. And as before, we're going to create a new session. And we're going to stick to our naming convention here, our naming method. We're going to say PA3 for production assignment 3 and our last name. Okay, so my last name's Natter. All right, and again, you know, I'll just keep saying this. Just I'm making note, the sample rate is 48 kilohertz. The, the bit depth is 24-bit. 20, um, I see that my location for my session folder is on my desktop, although I could hit this location button to place it somewhere else. Okay, I'm going to hit Create. Okay, so we just took care of step number one, step number two, and step number three. Uh, now we're going to add a click track to our session, as we did in our last assignment. So to do that, we're going to go to the track menu. And remember, all the way at the bottom is create click track. Okay, and you'll see that Pro Tools just drops the click track right into the session didn't even need a, a dialog box. Um, I will hit command equals and you'll see, you know, here it is in the mix view and the, the plugin that automatically gets inserted is the click plugin. Not much we have to do with it. You could mess with it if you want, but we don't need to. All right, I'm going back to the mix window. Command equal. Okay, so that takes care of step four. Okay, step five. Uh, we're going to set our tempo to something other than the default tempo that Pro Tools opens up to, which is 120 beats per minute. And remember, we can find that in this area here. So to adjust the tempo, just click on the number. It will highlight, and you can change the tempo to something um, that suits your project, suits your, your vision. Okay, so I'm going to say this is, we'll go faster this time. This is going to be 142. Okay, so now the temp, I hit return. Great, it's not highlighted. Now the tempo of this entire project, entire session, I mean, is 142 beats per minute. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is import the provided audio clips. Um, you'll find them on the computer in the lab or you can download them directly from the assignment on Blackboard. All right, so I happen to have them right here on a folder on my desktop. To import audio clips, this is pre-recorded audio that you may have somewhere on your computer or on a flash drive. To import it into your project, you go to the file menu and as you might have guessed, you scroll down to import and then you go to audio. Okay. Now that opens up a dialog box that um, has a number of things. Um, the, the top of the box is just like a, a browser, you know, like a finder window kind of thing. And I could locate the files I'm looking for from that. Now I, I just said I know they're on my desktop, right? And and it was uh, one shot drums. I click OK. So now I have one shot hi hat, kick, percussion, and snare. Now, if I just kind of click on one of these things, it gives me some information about the file that's selected up here. It tells me what its bit depth is, what its sample rate is. Um, it also tells me here if it's compatible with my current session. And if it is, it's fine. It will just let me add. I could just hit this button and boom it adds right in. It's ready to be imported into the session. And matter of fact, all four of these, you know, can be done that way. They're all compatible. They're all the same uh, sample rate and bit depth as the session. So I'm going to do that. So once I've selected all the files I wish to Im import, you know, from 
maybe even various places on my computer. Um, then I hit this open button. Then I get this audio import options dialog box. And it's asking me a couple important things. It's saying, one, how do you want to import these into Pro Tools? When you, these import, do you want them all to go to a new track? The first file drops to track one, another file drops to track two, another file drops to track three, and so on. If you want that, you leave it on new track. Um, in this case, we want to do something a little different. We, wanna, we don't want to actually import everything and have it set up a bunch of tracks like you may recall we did for the dub demo. In this case, we just want to import all the audio clips and make them available for our work in our session. So in that case, we want to import them to the clip list. All right. I said there was two things it's asking about. Well, when we're on new track, we have to we have to tell Pro Tools for a, the second thing where exactly you know we want them to drop. We want Pro Tools to drop the clips into those tracks do we want each clip to start at the beginning of the session right there at zero or do we want it to start somewhere where we might have a cursor or something or do we want to just get another dialog dialog box to say exactly you know what measure and what beat to to drop the the clips in on most of the time i'll just do session start for for that but it just depends on what you're doing so um i'm gonna hit okay boom and it's a little uh, concealed here but maybe you see some stuff right there. Let me see if I can make this a little better for us. Okay, so I just dragged particularly this bar over a bit. Now, everything that we just imported just got dropped into this list of things. Now, this is just kind of a pointer to your audio files folder in your main session folder. But it's interesting that we can now use this area and we can literally drag these things into our session. So next in our instructions here, step number seven says to add four new audio tracks to your session, naming them hi-hat, kick, percussion, and snare. There's a number of ways that you can go about doing this. Let's do this um, using the track menu, hitting new. Here, we'll do it this way. So you see this little plus button here? I click that, click that, click that again. Okay, now I, I have four things. Um, I want them all to be mono. I want them all to be audio tracks. Um, but later, at a later date, we'll talk about why audio tracks def default to samples. And if you recall why the MIDI tracks seem to default to ticks. Um, and But now I'm going to actually name them when I, over here, each, each of these tracks, I'm going to name them when I want to name them. So step number seven says to name each of the tracks hi-hat, kick, percussion, and snare. So let's do that. We'll name the first one hi-hat. We'll name the next one kick. We'll name the next one perk for percussion. And we'll name the next one snare. Now in one dialog box, we were able to create four new tracks in one shot. So to finish that, we just hit the Create button, and the four tracks are now created. Now, this happens uh, sometimes. See how this is highlighted, 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 highlighted. When multiple tracks are highlighted like this, uh, one thing you can do is hold down the Option key while you click, and that unselects them all. All right, so holding down Option and clicking on a track will select everything, but in reverse, while everything's selected, if you hold on Option and click on it, everything will be deselected. Okay, so everything of the light of the same type will be selected. That's basically what Option does in Pro Tools. Okay, so now we have the four tracks. Okay, step number eight says drag the clips from the clips menu to the respective tracks. Okay, easy peasy. I want to be here in my edit window. It's this is the window to do this kind of thing in. All right, so I'm going to take my hi-hat clip over here, select it, and I'm going to drag it right on to right on to that. Okay, now that looks like, did I do it or not do it? It's the tiniest little sliver. So I'm going to use this zoom button over here to zoom in. 
horizontal zoom in. Where's this is horizontal zoom out. Ah, there we go. That's a little nicer. Now I look, it looks like I actually did something. Okay. Um, then I'm going to take this one shot kick and drag that to in, into this as well. Okay, great. And I'm going to take one shot percussion, drag it to the percussion track. I'm going to take the one shot snare. Of course, it says one shot snare one. Interesting. <laughs> and then drag that to the snare um, tracks. Okay. Okay, so the next step says organize the clips into a rhythm, and, and it's optional. Of course, you know, I'm sure you'll, you'll have some fun doing it if you give it a shot. Um, one thing I'm going to do before that is just this looks odd to me. I want, I like to not have my click track at the beginning. To move any track around, you just kind of click on its uh, name area and then just, just literally drag it somewhere, and you'll see some like yellow lights highlighting where it will be dropped. So I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom. Great. I like that better. The click track is sort of out of the way. It's kind of like I don't really need to do anything with the click track except for maybe like mute it or unmute it. Okay, so now we have everything here. So if I were to click this button to return to zero and hit play, we'll probably hear all four of these sounds at once since they're all lined up right on top of each other. Let's see. So we did. That's not a very exciting rhythm, so <laughs> we'll we'll do something with it. We'll uh, we'll mix it up a little bit. We won't go too crazy though. All right, here's something that's important to to mention before we go on and and move these clips around. It's the rulers up top. So you'll notice that we have um, a whole bunch of things here that would be called rulers, and the top one is bars and beats. Then we got minutes and seconds, and then we got tempo, and we got markers. And you may have some of these shut off from using Pro Tools previously, and you know, doing different things with it. Now, the one that we're going to be concerned with here is bars and beats and it's hard to see but right now minutes and seconds is actually selected and you might notice like how these um, vertical lines sort of coincide with that minutes and seconds ruler now I want to click on bars and beats and make sure that these vertical lines coincide with my bars and beats ruler and now you can also see that we have Measure one, beat one, measure one, beat two, measure one, beat three, measure one, beat four. Then we're in measure two. Measure two, beat one, measure two, beat two, measure two, beat three, measure two, beat four, etc. And going on. Okay. So this is called the grid. And right now the grid is zoomed into beats, which is actually probably just fine for what we're doing at this moment. Okay, so these four options here, they are the Pro Tools edit modes. And each one of them will allow you to work differently with these clips when you slide them around and, and splice them and edit them in different ways. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on grid mode. And basically, when I move things around, that will make it so things can only snap, only line up to these grid markers or these, you know, these points on the grid. So in other words, in this case, since the grid is zoomed in to four beats per measure, when I shift things around, things will have to snap to one of those four beats, okay? So let's see. I'm going to take my, where am I here? I'm going to take my kick, and I'll just leave the tick kick there. And I'm going to take the snare, I'm going to shift it over, and it just, I can't put it between beat one and beat two. It can either just be on beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, right? I'm going to put it on beat two. Okay. So I have a kick on beat one, a snare on beat two. I'll put, this is not going to be the greatest rhythm here, but I'll put a, I'll put a uh, percussion hit on beat three. And I'll put a hi-hat hit on beat four. Okay, so now everything is kind of occupying different beats. Now, exactly the order that you do this is totally up to you. Like a drummer, I like to have my kick and snare on the bottom. I like to have kick, snare, 
and then hi-hat, and then, you know, some other things, okay? So I'm just literally dragging like I was doing before to, to line this up the way that makes sense to me, although I'm having a hard time dragging. There we go. All right, so kick, snare, hi-hat, percussion. All right, now I'm going to beat one, I got a kick. Beat two, I got a snare. Beat three, I got one hit of a percussion. Beat four, I got the hi-hat. Now if I make sure this is at zero, boom, hit play, we should hear... Uh, four beats in time, by the way, with our tempo. And as long as the click track is not muted, right? That's, a, that's it being muted. This is it unmuted. And as long as this right here is, is uh, blue or, you know, or toggled on, which is the metronome, see? Um, as long as the metronome is on, oops, I just sort of double clicked it so I got my metronome dialog box, but I don't want to change anything in it at the moment. As long as the metronome is toggled on, like that, highlighted blue, and the click track is not muted, like, like this, there's it muted, there's it not muted, um, I should hear the click when I hit play. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. Let's see what we got. All right, there's my four hit. Okay, so, I mean, that wasn't the most exciting rhythm ever. So, I mean, I can work on that a little bit more. One thing I'll do is I'll just put a kick drum on all four beats. Okay, now here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to um, hold down the Option key while I click and drag. And what that does is it creates a duplicate. And because I'm in grid mode, I can only release this duplicate on one of the beats, okay? So I'm going to release this one in beat two. Then I'm going to click on this one, hit option, drag that over to beat three. Click on the next one, hold down option, and drag over to beat four. And now I have four, four bass drum hits here. Okay, so now I'm going to make my snare go on beat two and beat four, okay? So this snare is already on beat two, so I'm going to hit the option key and I'm going to drag over to beat four. Cool. Now, for the percussion, I will put this on beat four, just that one hit on beat four. And, and for the hi-hat, I actually want to put it in between the beats. So I can't do that right now because the... It's, it's set to snap to the grid, and the grid is only set to show the beats. So if I want to put any of these clips on anything other than the beats, I need a, a more zoomed in or a finer grid. All right, so the way to change the resolution or the amount of options you have on the grid is to go to this box here, and you could see grid. And by the way... Um, you could toggle the grid on and off by highlighting the word grid or making sure it's highlighted. But to change what we're seeing, you click on the note, okay? And right now you see a picture of a quarter note. So that's what one beat is in 4-4 four, four time. It's the time of a quarter note. If I click on that, I can actually change. And, and I want to just zoom in a little bit. I want more options. So I'm going to click on the, the next shorter amount of time, an eighth note. So instead of having four options or four places I can drop things into on the grid, I'll now have eight places I can drop things into on the grid. There's you know, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight before we get to measure two. Now that's good. I now want to take my hi-hat and again I'm going to hit option and I'm going to drag some more over. So this is going to be in between beat one and beat two. I'm going to keep that going. Hold down option, drag this over so it's in between beat two and beat three. Hold down option, drag this over so it's in between beat three and beat four. And then I'm going to grab this one on beat three and hold down option. I'm going to click on it, hold down option while I drag it in between beat four and beat one of the next measure, okay? Now, again, I just wanted to have my percussion on beat four here, it's just for a little change up at the end of the measure. 
And now we got something. Okay, um, this should play just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna hit, turn to zero, hit play. Cool, that worked. Now, I don't really love how these clips have gone past uh, the beginning of measure two. And I could just fix that pretty easily just by using one of these tools here called the trim tool. Okay, so I mean, these are a whole bunch of tools. We'll talk a lot more about these things. But uh, the three very, the three main ones, super useful, are called the grabber tool, which just allows you to select things and then you maybe shift it while you're grabbing it. Um, the selector tool, which allows you to sort of like move your cursor over things and select them. Okay. You can select a whole area of things, even if there's nothing there, I could still select an area. Um, and then you have this trim tool, which allows you to move to the edge of a clip and trim it, right? In this case, I want it to be right at the beginning of two. And same thing with all these. I want to trim this back to the beginning of measure two, trim this back to the beginning of measure two, trim this back to the beginning of measure two. So now if I were to repeat this, you know, this would actually just take up a measure and then there wouldn't be any overlap. Okay, now I may, you know, be a little not so happy about that ending abruptly, but we'll see. We'll see what that sounds like. So let's hear it. Now I have a rhythm here, a groove, a rhythm, a beat, whatever you want to call it, that is all aligned to the grid. So I don't really need to hear my metronome to play this back. I mean, I might, depending on what I was adding to it or if I was recording some audio into the track, I might. But in this case, I don't really need to hear it. I'm going to mute that click track. Okay, so now I have all this. I'm going to go to my selector tool. And I'm just going to grab everything. And I'm still in grid mode, so remember that my selector tool, tool, let me just demonstrate again, is only going to snap to the, to these grid points. All right, so I'm pretty safe if I just sort of like get close here, you know, somewhere in the middle here. I can, I can be sh sure that it's only going to grab um, these clips to the edge of the grid lines. All right, so this actually is everything that's within measure one. I'm going to hit a command key because I want to hear what this sounds like when it repeats. I'm going to hit command D for duplicate. And I'll do it like four times. Command D again. Command D again. I can't see that. Um, so I mean, I could scroll over by doing this. I also could zoom out a little bit. I was zooming out a lot, but <laughs> that's okay. Now I'm going to Go back to the beginning. Let's see what it sounds like when we hear this like four times. Okay, so now, you know, we have a little bit of a beat. As with always, save along the way. Save quite frequently. So I'm going to hit File, Save. Okay, so I know my, my session is saved, all my work to this point. And that, by the way, is step 10. Okay, so now step 11 says select the entire length of the clip. So I mean, we could do that the same way. I'm, I'm still in grid mode. I'm on my selector tool. I could click somewhere near this grid line. It doesn't matter if I select all the tracks or I just select the length of one. What I'm trying to do is make sure there is a selection that is as long as what I want to bounce down what I want to turn into an audio file that I can export out of Pro Tools. So, I mean, as long as this is the length, I'm good. So, I, I mean, I could have done everything like this. Doesn't really make a difference. I could just do just one. It just has to be the length. One thing I don't necessarily want to do is, you know, have a selection that's longer than what I want to bounce out of here because all this will bounce is empty space. It's, you know, just makes a bigger file and it's not something you want to like send to a client or something like that. All right, so click here, just drag that. Good, that's selected. 
So now step 12 says to bounce your session to an MP3 file. All right, so how do we do that? Okay, the file menu. We scroll down to bounce mix. And we get this dialog box. And uh, we're going to name it. I'm going to say uh, bounce one. I'm going to make sure that this is, at, is set to MP3. Um, MP3s are compressed, smaller audio files, um, whereas WAVE and AIFF are not compressed, so they're larger. Um, there's reasons for you to use both. Um, I'm going to just make sure that it's going to be bounced into my session folder, bounce files subfolder, which it's set to do by clicking right here. I could, of course, put it somewhere else if there was a reason to do that, but it's safe to put it in your bounce files folder. And I'm going to hit bounce. Okay, because it's an MP3, I get this other dialog box that asks me to uh, make a few more selections about the quality of the, of the MP3. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is we have an ability to enter some what they call metadata here. MP3 files can can um, have some information sort of uh, saved, you know, or embedded into the file, like you know these things: title, artist, album. Um, whereas you can't necessarily do that with a WAV file, um, and that's useful for th certain kinds of things, like you know, sending music to a music supervisor or something like that when you're trying to get your stuff into a film or a TV show or something. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, so that was bounce. Um, we should be able to go to the session folder and look in the bounce folder and see what we just bounced. So I'm going to do that. Okay, I'll just kind of, for me, I remember it's on my desktop. And it is this one, PA3. And there's my session folder. And inside here should be PA3 Natter Bounce 1. If I click that my audio player on my computer will open presumably and play it let's see if it does oops it just went right into the next song <laughs> but it, it did it did not record any extra empty space which is great all right so i'm going to close apple music and that was uh, step 12. And then step number 13 is taking some screenshots. Take a screenshot of your edit window. Okay. And step 14, take a screenshot of your bounced files. I mean, bounced files full subfolder, right? I mean, you could do it like this. That'd be fine. And then step 15, upload your screenshots and your bounced MP3 to Blackboard. Okay, I hope this was helpful and uh, until next time.